anyone can pretty much walk up to your front door and that can be a bit of a security risk especially if you're home alert the sink is piled with other people's dishes and you kind of have to do like a cleanup before you even start cooking and that can be quite annoying common areas like the yard like the outdoor areas yard and even like the hallways and stuff were always very well maintained and it wasn't our responsibility and it was all covered in our I'm Kazini Koma Pia and welcome on this channel I do videos about my life living here in Australia and I also share different life lessons that I've learned along the way. Today I'm going to be talking about different accommodation options that are available in Australia and I'm going to be sharing mainly from my experience living in Brisbane. If you're subscribed on this channel you would know I have been living in Brisbane since I moved from Zimbabwe 15 years ago and like during that time I have lived in different types of accommodation and I have received some messages from people who are newly relocated to Australia or who are planning to relocate to Australia and I just thought that this information might be helpful to you to help choose the accommodation that will be a best fit for you and your family. I wanted to share from three types of accommodation that I have lived in and share the different pros and cons and the costs so that you will be able to make an informed decision on what's right for you. So the first type of accommodation that I have lived in in Australia was share accommodation and they call these share houses and I've spoken previously about share houses and my experience um, in share houses in on this channel and just wanted to dive a little bit deeper on more of the pros and the cons so what a share house is is a house a full house a full standalone house that has you know a certain number of bedrooms and there are different individuals who rent out a bedroom so you would rent out a bedroom and everything else within that house will be shared with the other housemates things like the living room the kitchen and sometimes the bathroom if you don't have an ensuite this is the cheapest type of accommodation that you can get in Australia because you're only renting out your room. And I will start off with the pros of this type of accommodation from my experience in a share house. I've lived, when I was a student, I lived in like several share houses and I had, you know, good experiences, bad experiences, but I just want to share like some of the things that I found beneficial about share houses. They are a very cheap option because you're pretty much splitting the rent of a whole house between three or four people and that makes it very, very cheap. So you can get a share house for, for as low as about, you know, $180, $200 a week, all inclusive. And where, when I mean all inclusive, I mean inclusive of internet, electricity, and water and you just pay for your rent and everything else is included so you pay for your rent and your food the pros of that is it's very cheap and if you are someone who is newly relocating and you are moving by yourself this might be a good option because you can save a lot of money to then explore the other accommodation options that I'm going to be talking about if you're share if you're staying in a share house like you don't have a lot of bills the bills that you have are more for your food and maybe to maintain your other like individual costs not costs like overheads for the house and the other advantage of living in a share house is you will always have company because in a share house there are other people 
living in that house so if you're someone who likes to socialize if you're someone who doesn't like to stay alone if you're someone who likes to come home to someone <laughs> then a share house can be a very attractive option because you can socialize with your roommates you can build connections with them and you know that when you come home you're not coming home to an empty house and sometimes that can be actually very good for your mental health i remember there was a share house that I lived in and this was actually like the best share house that I lived in where there were about three other people renting in that particular house and when I would come from uni like you know sometimes you come home and you know you're coming from uni you're coming from work and you had a really long day you had you know sometimes not a very good day and I would come home I had this one really bubbly roommate <laughs> he was a housemate but we just call them like roommates but we had this really bubbly like root housemate and he would always be singing like you would <laughs> he was so funny so i knew that when i come home like you know i'll get to interact with this person there's always going to be some kind of sound in the house and during that time like i was like had new, just moved out of home where I had lived with quite a large family. I have five other brothers and sis sisters. So the house was always full of activity and noise and, you know, a lot of things going on. So I was really used to just coming home to other people and having a chat and living in a share house, a good share house with good housemates was really good for my mental health because I really got to interact with other people, even share ideas, share experiences, and just feel like you're not alone. So that was one of the good things. Another thing about a share house that was good that I found is that most of them came furnished. So all you had to do is move in with your clothes. You would already have a bed and like the lounge, the kitchen, everything else is furnished. There are some share houses where you don't have a bed in your room, but it's very easy to like buy a bed other than buying like furniture for a whole house. And it's a lot cheaper. So I have lived in share houses where everything was provided, like the bed and everything. And I have lived in other share houses where there was no bed and I had to bring in my own bed, but still it was quite low cost. And, you know, I didn't have to think about a lot of things. And when it came to moving, all I had to do was pack my suitcase and leave. I didn't need to have like a whole moving truck. You know, like if I was to move from this house right now, like I would need moving trucks because <laughs> I've just acquired a lot of things over the years. But in a share house, like I just had one suitcase, like I the first share house I had, I had one suitcase. Then I started, I think at the end, I had like two suitcases of clothes, but I really didn't have much. When it came to moving, I could like ask a friend to help me move and it wouldn't take that long. I'll just pack all my things in my suitcases and off we go. And that was all the moving that I needed to do. And when it comes to the pros of living in a share house is sometimes you don't know what you're going to get because of the other people that you're living with you don't know their personalities you kind of don't know their backgrounds and you don't know their different habits now habits for me was one of like the biggest cons because i have lived with housemates that were not very hygienic that were not very tidy and when it came to shared spaces it was quite annoying because they wouldn't always clean up after themselves and you know sometimes you just want to get into the kitchen after a long day and cook your meal but then you find that the stove is dirty the sink is piled with other people's dishes and you kind of have to do like a cleanup before you even start cooking and that can be quite annoying so that is one of the cons of living in a share house the other con of living in a share house is you have very limited space. The space that you own is basically the room, the bedroom that you are renting. And when it comes to kitchen space, you're usually allocated 
a specific cupboard in the kitchen or part of a cupboard um, to keep all like your dry food and when it comes to the fridge you are only given maybe a shelf or two shelves there are some share houses that are good that they have two refrigerators but some of them only have uh, one refrigerator and that can be quite annoying because you can't buy a lot of things because there's no space to keep your stuff and you have to share your storage space with other people and you know depending on the kind of person you are and what you like to eat if you like to buy your food in bulk you know it might be a bit of a disadvantage there because you can only shop a few things at a time which might mean that you will have to go shopping a little bit more often maybe even sometimes more than once a week because you just don't have the space to keep your food. So those are some of the cons of staying in a share house. Now moving on to the second accommodation option, which is apartments. Um, after I, I had gone through several share houses, I finally moved into an apartment. And this was the first apartment that I had rented out and it was a rental and it was me and my husband uh renting this apartment it was a two bedroom apartment the space was quite limited but it was such a step up from a share house because i it, i came from having one bedroom to having like two bedrooms my own kitchen lounge like all the space that we had was ours so the pros of renting are that depending on the type of rental that you have so the rental that i had was an apartment so you had a code to enter the door and then you had uh, a code or was it a code or a key i don't remember to enter your apartment i found this to be very very secure and at that time we were pretty young like when i got married i was 25 years old <laughs> so we were pretty young and my husband and I would go out a lot and it was always very assuring what we knew that if we go out, we know that our apartment is safe because it's got a code to enter and it's really, really hard for someone to kind of get into an apartment and steal stuff. So it felt really, really secure and the other apartments are quite close. So even if you did run into any kind of trouble, which fortunately we never did, you know that your neighbors are really close by and you know, you, you're not gonna be in distress for a long time. So, and the other advantage of living in an apartment is like there's the body corporate. So the people that are responsible for maintaining the property. So all the common areas like the yard, like the outdoor areas, yard, and even like the hallways and stuff were always very well maintained and it wasn't our responsibility. And it was all covered in our rentals. So all the like outdoors work, we didn't have to mow the yard, we didn't have to like do a lot of stuff because you know, the body corporate would cover all that stuff. So that was quite convenient to have an apartment. So those were some of the things that I really, really enjoyed about being in an apartment. And usually like apartments, you can find apartments closer to the city, which is good. It's really kind of hard sometimes to find like a full house closer to the city. And with apartments, you can find apartments within the city, like in the CBD. You can also find apartments closer to the city and to the different kind of like experiences that you want to enjoy and you know it could be closer to restaurants or closer to other things it's quite easy to find apartments and they're more abundant because they're quite a lot more apartments than you know it's easier to find an apartment than rental because people tend to cycle through apartments more frequently than houses so that was another advantage that we had now if you're looking to buy a property then apartment when it comes to those like body corporate they all usually have like a body corporate fee of like usually a hundred dollars or more which covers things like you know other facilities if there's a pool a gym security and all that kind of stuff oh yeah and that's another part, uh, advantage of an apartment is that you could have so many more facilities within you know that complex you can have a pool 
you can have a gym like depending on the kind of apartment that you choose but you can really have like a really good lifestyle just within that complex so that that's one of the advantages of living in an apartment and some of the pros i mean cons of living in an apartment are that they are still pretty small spaces most apartments are not as big as full houses so you are quite limited when it comes to space and i remember with the apartment that we first moved into it did have two bedrooms but those two bedrooms because it was closer to the city it was a bit of a smaller apartment so the two bedrooms were not as big and the living space was not as big so if you do have a lot of stuff you might find that it's a bit hard to store stuff in an apartment the advantage of our apartment is we actually had a storage room downstairs where we could store other stuff and our storage room was full so that's how small apartments can be it can be a little bit of a challenge to store stuff especially if you have kids and like i've got two kids myself i know that kids can accumulate a lot of stuff so you know it might be a little bit of a challenge if you're in an apartment that doesn't have a lot of space and another thing with apartments that can be a disadvantage is accessibility depending on your accessibility needs like some apartments only have stairs and they don't have lifts so that means that you will have to take the stairs and the apartment that we lived in i remember had stairs and <laughs> Sometimes it will be so annoying because I actually had two flights of stairs that I had to go up to get to our apartment So we didn't have a lift in our building So sometimes when you've got groceries and you have to take your groceries up like Some flights of stairs it can be quite exhausting. So, you know, if you've got accessibility needs like if you're you know, maybe you need different aids or you're in a wheelchair like it can be quite difficult to get around in an apartment or maybe you're someone who doesn't have accessibility needs but you just don't like to have to go up and down stairs um, all the time it can be a bit of a disadvantage and you can find like different types of like apartments or townhouses that are you know more low set and you don't have to have stairs like those are some of the things that you can think of um, but I think if you're someone who is moving in with kids or a family then an apartment can be ideal because you probably haven't if you're newly migrated you probably don't have that much stuff or you know you just want to experience other you know things maybe you want a pool but you don't want to have to maintain it and you want access to a gym and those kind of things that can be you know and a convenience as well and when it comes to cost apartments are more expensive than share houses because you are paying for a bigger space and in terms of pricing the average price at the moment because the cost of living has gone up the average price for apartments is you know it goes ranges from about 400 to 600 dollars a week and that's for your living space and if you're renting you don't pay body corporate but if you own you'll pay body corporate and then you have that rent and in apartments you usually pay for your own water and you also pay your electricity bill so it is a bit of a higher bill than you would pay in a share house and apartment is not all inclusive you have to pay the bills yourself and the last type of accommodation that i want to talk about is a standalone house um and i think for me i'm i'm, I'm kind of like i go in between like with my favorites between apartment and standalone house standalone house is got obviously more space things are not as cramped your neighbors are not as close so if you're someone who enjoys space and you want to be you know you enjoy that freedom you really want to just you know relax and you want to let loose and you know have that space to do that then a standalone house may may be the best option for you and I find that standalone houses are good for people who have kids as well because you know you can get a bigger backyard you can have more activities so those are some of the advantages of having a standalone house is the space the space is amazing 
you can you store all your stuff you don't have to have like a separate storage unit and you also you know to have you know a whole most houses have like you know a double garage space and you can store a lot of things in there as well if you need to now the cons of a standalone house and this is one of my pet peeves to this day because i live in a standalone house and that is the maintenance there is a lot of maintenance involved in a standalone house depending on how big your yard is so you're responsible for your lawns and you know just maintaining the space around you to you would just you'll be cleaning a bigger space so you know a standalone house is dis disadvantageous on that note but and if you're newly migrated like you know you might not want to spend a lot of time on maintenance or you might not even like have acquired like the things like you don't ha you, you have to think about like getting a loan mower getting all those kind of things if you know you're new to the country and that might be something that you don't want to spend money on immediately so a standalone house is you know it won't be an advantage when it comes to that and the other thing that you know is a con for standalone houses is the security because a standalone house usually you don't you don't have like that code to get into the gate and stuff like that the style of houses in australia is that most of them don't have a wall like so you just kind of have a fence like in your backyard and stuff but the house just faces the street and like anyone can pretty much walk up to your front door and that can be a bit of a security risk especially if you're home alone i know sometimes like when my husband's not there like i do worry a little bit about the security but we have invested a lot in you know alarms and different kind of systems to secure the house and australia is generally a safe space so we haven't had any trouble but you know that's one of the cons of a standalone house is the security you have to think that you know your house is quite accessible and depending on the area you live in you might want to choose you know a safer area a safer neighborhood if you've got a standalone house because you know you want to be able to protect your house you want to be able to protect yourselves and all that and when it comes to cost for a standalone house it's a standalone house is just slightly more expensive than apartment so standalone houses will start from about i say from about 450 to about 650 and standalone houses are usually three plus bedrooms it's very rare to get a two bedroom standalone house it you can get them but they're quite you know they're not as common it's usually three four or five bedroom houses so you know it's a little bit more expensive and of course on top of that you've got your electricity you've got your uh, water and stuff like that so it does add on to the cost so yeah guys if you are looking to move to australia or if you've recently moved to australia and you're looking for different accommodation options those are some of the things that you know i have learned from my experiences in living in the different types of accommodation and what i'm going to do is also link in the description box one of the best accommodation websites that you can search um, to look at different prices when it comes to sharing renting and even buying houses in australia it's realestate.com.au and you can search different like suburbs different areas and you can kind of find the range even if you're not yet in australia you can start searching that website and it will give you a little bit of an idea of the area you want to move to and how much you'll be expected to pay for that type of accommodation so hope that was helpful guys and i'll see you in my next video